Hi guys, this is Ms. Rayner, your environmental systems teacher, coming to you today from C347 at MacArthur High School to talk about water treatment. So we saw in your lab yesterday um, what happens when too much nutrition is in the water. Algae populations go crazy, bacteria populations go crazy eating the algae. The algae, by the way, has eaten the extra nutrition. Um, all of this respiration in the water is reducing the dissolved oxygen. Nobody else can live. We can't have that. We can't put all that extra nutrition into the water. So what do we do with all our sewage, with all our wastewater? We have to treat it. Um, and here's the different processes that it has to go through in order to be treated. So this is the entire picture. And if I was you, I'd pause the video and either draw this one or draw this one. It's up to you. But basically what's going on here is a bunch of physical processes. So the water with all of the junk in it is either going through a screen or being allowed to settle. Um, and next come the biological processes. This is where we take advantage of the bacteria that's already in the water and we feed it lots and lots of bubbles of oxygen. Why do we do that? Well, the bacteria already has all this extra food. We want it to have a bunch of extra oxygen so that when it does its cellular respiration, it works quickly to get rid of that extra food. Then we allow the extra sludge to uh, settle out. We disinfect that bacteria-laden water and we're ready. Here we go step by step. So <clears throat> the last step is advanced or tertiary processes. This is the chemical or usually light processes that will um, remove the bacteria, they'll remove some coloration, they'll disinfect. Um, sometimes there are processes to get rid of other chemicals but um, those, those aren't as big as what the bacteria do to get rid of the nitrates and phosphates. Okay, pause the video here if you need to to write these things down. Here is what primary treatment means. Primary is basically physical. Something like a screen, something like settling tank, anything that is a physical process happening to the water and all the gunk in the water. Secondary sewage treatment is a biological process. It means we take advantage of living things, bacteria to get rid of, to eat up all of that um, nitrate, all of that extra nitrate and phosphate, all of that extra nutrition. What do they need? A whole bunch of oxygen to do that. So wherever you see lots of bubbles, that is a secondary process. <clears throat> Here's another diagram that's basically illustrating the same things. The water goes through these physical processes, a bar screen, where the biggest things like branches and leaves are filtered out, a grit chamber where the smaller, small-ish, you know, the medium things kind of settle down to the bottom, and then another chance for the, the stuff to settle down to the bottom and be taken away. Um, here again is the air bubbles going up. Where the air bubbles are going up, the bacteria is working. And then we go on to the tertiary processes, disinfection. By the way, um, don't forget that along with processing the water, you've got to process all the stuff that has settled out of the water. So it becomes kind of tricky because this is not just basically, sorry, but human animal waste. It's everything else that goes down the drains all the way throughout the city. So it might be safe or it might not be safe to use that as fertilizer in your garden. You've got to think about those things. So again, pause the video here if you like so you can get some more specifics about primary um, wastewater management. These primary processes, again, they're primarily the physical processes, things that take the junk out of the water, allow it to settle out. This is before you aerate the water, put lots of bubbles in it so that the bacteria can work. Secondary processes use microorganisms. So again, they need extra oxygen to eat up all of that extra nutrition, this is where we provide the bubbles. After that, we let all the junk settle out again and try to collect it, um, and then we move on to the tertiary processes. Um, just a little bit more about the secondary processes, sometimes we call that activated sludge, because in that sludge is the bacteria that do the activity that we need them to do. So we aerate or we put bubbles in the wastewater this takes several hours, doesn't take too terribly long, um, but again, the gunk is allowed to settle out and the water has a lot less nitrates and phosphates in it. Now we've got to get rid of the bacteria. So 
<clears throat> the tertiary processes will use um, bleach, they'll use chlorine, they'll use UV lights. Um, mostly they do that to remove the bacteria. But I guess there are some chemicals that they can add to, to let to like get rid of the extra phosphates and nitrates, but <clears throat> mainly by now the bacteria have done that. Um, let's see. There's this issue about that extra sludge that's finally, you know, settled out. Some people like to use it as a soil conditioner, but think for a minute about all of the household cleaners, all of the medicines, all of the stuff that just goes down the drain in your house. And then think about all of the things that go down the gutters all around the city. Every time somebody dumps out after they've done an oil change, every time somebody washes away the pesticides in their lawn, those are all going down the same drain and they're all being processed the same way. So you might or you might not want that conditioning your garden soil. It depends on a lot of things. As an alternative, what some places do is they create an artificial um, wet. Remember, a wetland will take the already naturally eutrophic water from upriver and it'll process that before it gets to the ocean. So if we make an artificial wetland and give it a bunch of water from the city that has too much nutrition, a bunch of those benthic organisms, a bunch of the bottom feeders, the filter feeders, a bunch of the plants that live there are already kind of made for low oxygen and high nutrition environments. And they do really, really good work um, at getting the extra nutrition out of the water. Plus, it costs a whole heck of a lot less, but it can only handle so much, right? So where they've done it in California, it works for 16,000 people and that's it. All right, well, thank you guys very much for hanging out through this video with me, and we'll see you tomorrow in class. Be ready for a quiz.